Hello, my name is Naoi. I am an elf princess from the Aregean Kingdom, located at the western foot of the Misty Mountains. My father, King Yesler, and my mother, Queen Teriel, sent me to live in the human world for fear that she would be kidnapped by orcs or dwarves. Since a great war broke out between the elven kingdoms and these disgusting beings, who kidnap elven virgins to rape them and be able to reproduce. The elf girls have an indescribable beauty, we are slim with beautiful and sensual bodies, big and expressive eyes, and the elf boys are very handsome with a good body and slender. The orcs, on the other hand, are disgusting, larger than the elves, with scars on their faces and fat, dirty bodies. They were created from elves who were corrupted by the wickedness of an evil wizard named Elsofar. Not having created females for them, the only way to swell the ranks of their armies is to kidnap elves girls to breed their disgusting offspring, which are born with their malevolent genes, and can be bred to harm both humans and elves. Dwarfs do not reproduce, they too were created by the same diabolical wizard, but they are sterile. Despite that, they are immortal only dying in battle or killed, unlike orcs who do age. Dwarves kidnap humans and elves girls for fun, for that reason they have allied themselves with the orcs in this war. If an elf girl does not get pregnant from the orcs within a year, they give her to the dwarves to have fun with her, in the same way they sell the elfin skills that they capture to the orcs, not the human ones since the orcs and humans cannot reproduce. Elves are immortal just like dwarves but we take longer than humans to develop. We reach our fertile age at 50, which would be something like 18 years old human years, and our appearance remains the same for the rest of our lives. We only die by being killed and by some accident. He just turned 50, so I look like an 18 year old human girl, and since I am already in my childbearing years, it is danger for me. This war takes place in a parallel dimension, which humans cannot perceive, for which their world has no knowledge of what is happening. They only suffer the disappearance of some young human women by the dwarfs. How seldom do they dare to enter their world and their cities? For this reason, the safest thing for me is to live with the humans for a while, until this war ends, and in such a case that the elves win. Many stories confirm that the elves were among the first inhabitants that existed on Earth. We were born under the light of the stars, in great forests, completely surrounded by nature. This is why it is said that elves are nature personified. We originate mainly from the forests of Nordic regions. We are beings with magical powers and supernatural beauty, who can help or annoy humans. As elves, we are very connected to the agile and meditative nature of our body. We move with grace and delicacy in such a subtle and silent way that sometimes our presence is imperceptible. We can be practically invisible in a forest and even in a city, because we know how to stop magnetizing focus attention and gazes towards us, becoming one with the environment that surrounds them. We have other powers, such as healing or divination, without neglecting great skills to create potions of various kinds, such as those of good luck or healing always starting from nature. Some things we also cause harm to other beings, but only in extreme cases, if we feel threatened, or if we have to defend a loved one. The elves have developed improvision, so it is not difficult for us to move at night or through a forest. We have a series of supernatural powers, such as a great facility to see better in the dark than humans. We can communicate with animals easily, and we can also interact with the natural elements water, air, fire, and air. We also have psychic powers, such as telepathy, telekinesis and we can change our size and appearance, until we seem almost human. We love living in places completely surrounded by nature, harmonizing perfectly with the forests, with the vegetation, the rivers, the sea and everything that has to do with the natural environment. Old way of dressing can vary depending on the culture, the environment that surrounds us, or our personality, but, in general, we tend to wear green clothes and brown tones, very similar to nature. These colors are used for various reasons, mainly to better camouflage us in nature, and also because we adore the colors of the forests and Mother Earth.
We love music. We like to interpret the melodies by ourselves to our liking, without following any methodology. We use instruments that we make ourselves, and in general, we make them sound to the beat of the sound of nature, such as the song of the birds, the sound of waves, rain or air. We are excellent writers of poetry, and we are always in constant celebration with songs and dances. You should know that when you dance with an elf girl, the time passes differently, for you an hour may have passed, but in your human world years will pass. We can quickly learn the language of the human, just by listening and analyzing it, through actions that the person has when speaking, but we have our own language. By either way, my name in English is Sophia, which means wisdom, which is what my name also means in Elvish language. We eat bouncy beans for breakfast, but our energy actually comes from porridge, that's my favorite dish. We have a great dexterity with magic and a strength superior to humans, as well as greater intelligence and good sense. We elves have always related to nature and the appreciation we have for it. We love to protect it with the help of our magic. The deep connection and knowledge of nature, and the full confidence in the meditation of our creative mind, allows us to effectively re-establish the natural balance of any disorder, in the physical plane. By e having full connection with our body, we elves have an instinct as, or more developed, than that of animals. Our five senses are very fine and can perceive reality telepathically. We have a lot of creative energy, this energy added to the connection with nature. It allows us to transform the elements of our environment, to beautify or protect the integrity of the earth. We do not have a defined personality, we do not identify ourselves with any special part of our experience, but with the earth itself. This gives us the ability to transform, to blur and appear as many different characters depending on the eyes of the beholder. The heart of the elves is the heart of the earth, for us there is no difference, we are the earth and we watch over it, as we watch over ourselves. The state of consciousness gives us the magic of using the elements for our purposes. We watch over the preservation of the earth, not individual beings. We elves have a big heart, we feel a lot of love for life, a great unconditional love for all of creation. But we do not hesitate to make decisions that can be drastic towards humans, if their purpose is to protect the integrity of the planet. Six is achieved at the speed of other conscious and willful acts of delight or creation. Eat is one of the most delightful acts, in process and in memory, in an elven life, but only its intensity provided its importance, not its timing or duration. Eat cannot be endured for long without being disastrous. Eat is longer and of more intense delight in elves than in men, too intense to bear for long. Fetis, unlike elves, are seen only as female creatures. They are extremely small and very cute beings. They have beautiful butterfly sapid wings with which they can fly from one place to another very quickly. They have very delicate and fragile skin. Their size can vary depending on the type of fairy, but they are no bigger than an elf. They also have magical powers, just like the elves, and they also like to live in the woods, even some of them shelter in places close to where the elves live, or with the elves. Humans have great confusion on this subject, since they do not exactly differentiate between elves and fairies. Depending on the place and the beliefs, they are called the same, be they elves or fairies. It is said that they make such a magical powder that they have always been in danger, since other beings dedicated themselves to hunting them, in order to use that powder for personal purposes. Gablin, unlike us, are much smaller, and in many cases they have more aspects of humans. They are similar to elves in terms of their ears, long nose, and in some cases the skin. His appearance is not as friendly as the elves. In his face you can see those traits of rogues and jokers. They are commonly beings who like to play practical jokes. They don't mind hiding as much as we do, and in some cases they are mean and pranksters. They go to goblins' houses to play pranks on them and scare them, since living alone they get bored, 
Many people confuse these beings with us, but really, although they resemble each other in certain aspects, they are not the same. So be clear, in the beginning there were no humans on earth, first we were elves and dragons, then orcs, wolves, goblins and fairies. Of the dragons, we will talk in another video, since it is a somewhat extensive topic since we also had a bloody war with them. I hope you liked my story and subscribe to my channel, like this video, and click the bell, so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new content, and have a better understanding of the events that happen in the parallel world that you cannot see, as well as to know how this whole situation affects both races. In my next video, I hope to be installed in a human city, and I will tell you about my life as a human, and any other facts related to my situation as an elf girl.